Hello, bored students. It's time again for writing tips on video clips. Tip number eight don't read minds. So, Green Mantis Warrior, we are met again. Yes, Black Dragon Warrior. How was your anthropology class assignment? It is difficult. But I will be its master. <laughs> I find it foolishly easy. Every week, I go to the tanning salon and watch women go into the tanning booths. I describe them and their motives with ease. Do you interview them? I have no need. Their thoughts and feelings are obvious to me. There's no mind reading aloud in ethnography. <laughs> Maybe not for you, perhaps. But I can obviously write that my informants wish to become more beautiful and that they believe tanning will make them so. Sensei Peterson says that we must not write about our informants' psychology or tell us what they are thinking and feeling unless we have very specific data about this. Sensei Peterson is an old fool. I went to his office hours and told him him about seeing a girl during my participant observation at a Christian church. I saw her praying and singing. Then, at night, I saw her at a bar at 2 a.m., barely clothed, hanging all over a guy. And what were you doing at a bar at 2 a.m.? Um, important ninja business. Anyway, I asked Sensei Peterson how to write about her hypocrisy. What did he say? He said, it is ethnocentric and judgmental to assume that someone is hypocritical just because you observe them leaving a bar drunk in the company of an equally drunk potential sexual partner. Then you see them singing hymns in a church the next day. That is stupid. Obviously, it is hypocritical behavior. What else could it be? He said, Perhaps they think their behavior is a problem, and they go to church to pray about it. But how would you ever know which is her real motive? Ha! That was his point. You don't know. So you must leave guesses about people's thoughts and feelings and motives out of the data. And if I refuse? Then you must die. Sensei, I have slain the Black Dragon Warrior. What had she done to deserve death? She wrote about people's feelings and thoughts and motives in her fieldwork paper. Was it not right to kill her for this? Well, I probably would have just taken ten points off her paper. Also, she called you an old fool. Oh, well then... That makes it okay. But, Sensei, I still do not understand completely why we should not write about people's motives and feelings. Motives and intentions are slippery things, and it is best to leave them to psychologists. Except when your data specifically includes such information, such as interviews in which people talk about their motives. But even then, it's best to be cautious. People are not always able to describe their motives. So why do you go to church? Um... 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 I don't know. I guess because I want to be with God and experience His saving love. But then why do interviews at all? You may not learn their motives, but you learn what they think are appropriate motives. So, you learn something about culture. But what if we want to know why people do something? Like Black Dragon Warrior wanted to know why people went to the tanning salon. Why people come to a particular place is usually not a good question. At least, not in an anthropological sense. 
Then what kind of questions should I ask? Ask them what people do, socially, ritually, and communicatively. This usually leads to good thesis questions, good analysis, and good papers. Thank you, Sensei. Now I must find the Red Eagle Warrior. I suspect her of being ethnocentric. And we know what to do with students who are ethnocentric. <laughs>